Hi, this is Lakshmi Kantiwari. In this lesson, I am going to talk about a feature selection based on univariate ROC AUC for a classification. And I'll be also talking about the how you can use MAC mean square error for a regression problem. So in this lesson, first I'll talk about the ROC AUC. What is the ROC AUC curve? And then I'll I'll talk about the classification, use of ROC AUC for in, in classification in the first half of this lesson. And you can download the data set which I am using from this given link. So I'll be working on the Santander data set in the first half. And in the second half, I'll be using I'll be using a housing pricing. So that I'll take from uh, the SQL and data set, the Boston housing pricing. And then I'll select the features based on the MSE mean square error so the lowest mean square error shows that the 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 better features so while while uh, teaching you i'll be selecting these two features and then finally i'll compare the performance of the model based on just these two features and all the features okay and one more thing if you haven't watched my previous videos you can go ahead at my channel kgp talkie and at the kgp talkie you can watch the previous videos the previously I have taught about the Python's first and then I have taught about the classical machine learning like decision tree, SVM, K-mean, PCA, KNN, linear regression, logistic regression, assembling, etc, etc. And after that I have been talking about the feature selection. So before this the four lessons I have already talked on a feature selection and this is the fifth lesson in the feature selection. So you can go ahead and watch the, my previous videos. And if I, I would actually recommend you to watch the previous lessons to get along with this lesson as well. Okay, so without wasting a time, let's go ahead and start this lesson. The receiver operator characteristics ROC curve is well known in evaluating the classification performance owing to its superiority in dealing with the imbalance and the cost sensitive data. The ROC curve Okay, so here you see the ROC curve uh, which is drawn against the sensitivity and 1 minus specificity and, uh, and uh, the area under this ROC curve, okay, area under this ROC curve shows the AUC, okay, which is a metric. Now the existing ROC based uh, uh, the feature selection approaches are a simple and effective in individual feature selections and once again i should tell you that this is the univariate feature selection technique that's mean while selecting the features one feature doesn't look and uh, doesn't find out the its effects on the current feature that's mean here we find out that the features importance especially only based on the roc and auc characteristics are are the metrics on AUC metrics. So in a previous lesson as I had shown you how you can find out the individual uh, individual feature importance by using mutual information gain and uh, similarly in this lesson I'm going to show you how you can find out the the feature importance based on the ROC AUC metrics. Now the ROC curve and uh, AUC area so this curve is known as the ROC receiver operator characteristics and area under this curve area under this ROC curve is known as a AUC okay and this has been widely used for classification and classification uh, uh, accuracy in a supervised learning and though analyzing this uh, two dimensional graph okay this graph is very difficult that's why we are using we are going to use here AUC instead of just ROC okay perfect and one more thing the ROC AUC generally in this lesson we are going to use it for binary classification although it can be used for uh, uh, you know the many classifications uh, as well uh, more than I mean the binary but that is the quite difficult to use okay now let's go ahead and uh, and uh, and in the first lesson i'll show you how you can use roc auc uh, for a classification and in the second half of this lesson i'll show you 
how you can use the MAC, how you can use the MAC for the regression problem. Okay, so uh, 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 initially I have imported here NumPy as NP, Pandas as PD, Matplotlib dot Pyplot as PLT, C1 as SNS. So I I already have uh, uh, the some lines of the code written in this uh, the Jupyter notebook. Uh, because uh, the removal of the constant, quasi constant and duplicate features, I have been already, uh, uh, I have taught this into my previous lessons. You can go ahead and see this lesson where I have shown how you can remove the constant, quasi constant and duplicate features. Okay, so for, this, for, for the, uh, the sake of the time, I'm not going to cover this again. So now let's go ahead. See here. So in this uh, in this cell, what I'm going to do, I'm just uh, uh, importing trend test split, random forest classifier, accuracy score, ROC, AUC score, and the variance results. And you can download this. Uh, you can download this working file from the video descriptions, and uh, you can download the data files from this given link. Okay. So this has uh, GitHub lets you make data files for feature selection. So I'm going to use here Santander data set. So now let's go ahead and run this. So these two cells. Now the data has came and now the data Santander data is read into the data. And here I'm visualizing first five rows of this data. It has a 371 column, which includes the target as well. That's when the feature space is 370 and one one column is for target now here i'm gonna read the target and uh, the feature space the feature vectors into the x vector and the target into the y now you can see the dimension of the feature vector which is 370. now here i'm gonna take it into x train x test uh, y train and the y test train test split basically and it is being stratified with the Y. You can go ahead and watch my previous videos. I have described these things into very detail. And now in this section, I'm going to remove the constant, quasi constant and the duplicate features. So this cell is actually removing the constants and the quasi constant. So all the features is space are a feature vector which have a, uh, the variance threshold less than 0.01%. So that is going to remove all the columns. Okay. So in this, now you can go ahead and see here, after uh, um, uh, the 370, the 245 features are left here. Okay, that means if you see here, uh, the 370 minus 245, 125 features are either constants or quasi-constants. Now I'm going to uh, remove the duplicate features, but before that, I need to do a transpose. And then since this is uh, uh, the NumPy array, now I, am need, I, I, I need to convert it into the pandas data frame. So here I have converted it into a pandas data frame. Now after this, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna find out how many rows are the duplicate, which was actually the column. Now after this transpose has become the rows, it says that the 18 rows are and 18 rows are a duplicate. So with this, I'm gonna just remove those duplicated. Okay. So uh, with this, I'm going to find out the indexes of the duplicate features. And from this, I'm going to find out the, the, the indexes of the features which are not duplicate. And then finally, with these two line of the code, I am just removing the duplicate features and then again taking the transpose. That's mean I'm converting the rows into the column. Earlier, you see here from by taking a transpose, I had converted a column into rows. And once again, here now I'm converting rows into the column. Now let's run this and then finally you see the final now you see here the final uh, the final dimension of the input vector is 227 and uh, it was originally the 370 so now you can see here we have reduced the dimension of the input now let's go ahead and calculate here roc auc score but before that let's add few uh, the cell below this roc auc you can simply press the B key on your uh, the keyboard to add the to add the cells. Okay, so here now we are going to calculate the ROC AUC score. And to do that, what we need to do, we need to create here a empty list for ROC AUC. Okay, 
and then here i am going to calculate roc auc for each features and those features are into x train okay here x train unique dot columns so this is that the features okay all features and it will uh, uh, it will read the features one features by one by one all the features and then the clf classifier i'm going to use here the random forest classifier and the n estimator i'm going to use here 100 and the random state i'm going to use here 0 or 1 whatever you want to use generally i use 0 and then here i'm going to use here the clf dot fit now the x train underscore unique with this one and here i'm going to just select a features one feature and uh, then I'm going to convert this into just one dimensional array by calling uh, dot two frame. And uh, after that, here we are going to pass Y train. And once we have this one, then I'm going to call here the Y predict. Y predict is CLF dot uh, the predict. Okay. And once we have this one, then here we have X test unique okay and inside this x test unique then we have here a feature that's the one feature and then the two frame now with this we got uh, the y prediction now let's go ahead and calculate the roc auc so to calculate the ioc or um, rock auc i'm gonna append this into the empty list which i had created the earlier and then here i need to call roc auc score so rock uc score and in that i need to pass here y test which is the y true value and then y predict so with this it will calculate the roc auc and then it will produce a then it will produce a, a list where uh, the roc auc curve will be the placed now one more thing since there are the 227 features so that's why it is taking a little time and in meantime i can uh, the print roc auc at least i can write this I, I at least i can write it okay here roc auc and once this cell is completed then this cell will run and apart from that while running this cell let's go ahead and write uh, uh, the another cell the code into the another cell and in that cell what i'm going to do i'm going to place uh, uh, the another cell i'm going to uh, uh, the put the uh, uh, put the roc auc which is the particularly list i'm gonna put it into the pandas series and to do that what i can do the roc values is equal to the pd dot series and then here i have sorry roc auc right now you see here the roc auc has been calculated now with this i have created here a series roc value series now let's go ahead and put the sorry roc values indexes okay so indexes for this series which i'm gonna put uh, uh, that is going to be the x train unique dot columns okay and let's go ahead and sort these values roc auc values into descending order and to do that i need to do here roc values dot sort underscore values and then here we have ascending is equal to false and uh, I'm gonna also put in place is equal to true okay now after that let's go ahead and see ROC values now you see the ROC values has been sorted out into a descending order now the one thing you might have noticed here is that there are just few values ROC values which are greater than 0 0.25 and other than these few values okay none, none of these other values are greater than 0 0.5 so if ROC value is 0 0.5 that means that so uh, so so these 
actually the, these features are just making a random prediction. Since this is binary classification, if ROC AUC is 0.5, that's when the probability is the 0.5. That's when these features are not actually giving any input. Uh, these features are not actually giving any information to predict uh, correctly the output. So these are the just random, random predictions. Okay, so that means the these uh, these features are actually not providing any informations to predict the output. So with these features, what we can do? The any features which uh, the whose values are less than 0 0.5 or 0 0.5, those features are not required to put into the classification. So what we are going to do? We are going to remove all the features which have ROC AUC value 0 0.5 or less than 0 0.5. Okay, so let's go ahead. Uh, uh, the before that, let's go ahead and the visualize this ROC values. Okay, which we can do with the dot plot dot bar. Okay, right. So okay, so the most of the values are around zero point five, and there are just few values which is uh, uh, the more than zero point five. And let's go ahead and select those with the selector cell is equal to ROC values and uh, inside the square bracket put here the ROC values all the values which are greater than 0 0.5 and now you see here the selector the selector says that these are the just values which are greater than 0 0.5 now let's go ahead and uh, select here uh, the new training and the testing data set based on the ROC AUC values so here we have now the x train underscore ROC is equal to x train unique okay and then cell dot index now it will select only those features which are placed into this index okay so these indexes now this is the training data set and the similarly let's go ahead and select the testing data set x underscore test ROC is equal to x underscore test underscore uh, the unique and there we have cell dot index okay now with this we have got the x train ROC and x test ROC training and the testing data set we have selected by using the ROC AUC okay now let's go ahead and build the model and compare the performance okay so for model building as usual we are going to define here a function for a random forest run random forest and then it takes four inputs x train x test y train and then y test and now here we have the clf is the random forest classifier and in which we have estimator uh, 100 let's say and then here we have random state is equal to zero and the n jobs we have minus one that's mean it should utilize all the available core let's go ahead right here the clf dot fit that's mean i'm gonna just uh, the train our model here x train and the y train and you do remember that the x train doesn't mean that the original data but x train it is this data okay the whatever the data i pass to this method and then here we have y pred is equal to the clf dot the predict and then x underscore test and then here i print here accuracy on test set okay so on the accuracy on the test set how we can print that we can call the accuracy score and then we can pass here the true value of y which is y test and then the predicted value of the y so let's go ahead and run this cell and now we are going to 
call this with the time okay the magic time and we are going to call these methods on each data set by which we have selected by utilizing ROC AUC and after that I'll call these methods for on original data set as well so let's go ahead call this random forest and here we have x train ROC uh, x train ROC and then here we have x test ROC and then here we have y train as well and then finally here we have y test let's go ahead and see this so this is saying that the accuracy which we are getting that is around 95 point the 95 point three percent now let's go ahead and check the shape of this data okay so x train ROC dot shape you see here the shape of this data is just a 11 and the original data set has the shape of the 370 now let's go ahead and run this into original data set on the original data set we will get the time and run random forest and then we have x train and then x test and then y train and finally y test okay so with this here now you see um, the total time taken to train this model it took 1.5 second although the, to train this more uh, train this data after uh, uh, getting the ROC AUC after doing a feature selection by using ROC AUC the time is pretty less and if you compare the performance performance doesn't deteriorate very much although I have uh, talked it about uh, already about the filter methods in filter methods or in any feature selections that doesn't always guarantee that your uh, accuracy will increase so it depends on your data and the algorithm which you are using you need to do manual uh, uh, the manual check whether after selecting a features your performance is increasing or not so if it is increasing then you can go ahead with the feature selections so let's see if you if you prefer to choose this accuracy then you can go ahead with the original data set but if you choose to prefer the um, speed of your algorithm then I think you should go ahead with the selected features okay so this is all about the classification now let's go ahead and work with the feature selections using root mean square error in a regression problem okay so here I can write there the feature selection using RMSC in regression okay perfect so in in this regressions I'll be using a housing data set on the linear regression so let's go ahead and first load housing data set from sklearn dot uh, data sets and from there I'll import uh, the Boston data set okay from the sklearn data set itself but uh, the few of us uh, are also using the data set from the Kaggle so whatever you prefer you can use but here I'm gonna use the data set from the scikit-learn library itself and after this we have sklearn dot uh, the linear model import linear regression and after that I'm gonna import the matrix from sklearn so here we can type here the sklearn dot matrix import mean absolute error and mean square error and r2 scores as well okay perfect now let's go ahead and load the Boston data set once we get the Boston data set let's go ahead and and print the description of uh, uh, the data set sorry yeah this is the DE SCR so that's the description of this data set so this says that it has 506 rows and there are 13 columns which predicts the price of the house okay 
perfect now let's go ahead and get it into uh, x vector the feature vector which is the pd dot uh, the data set uh, data frame and the there data uh, uh, i'm gonna pass the boston dot data and the columns for this i'm gonna pass here the boston dot the feature names now let's go ahead and get the head of this feature space so here this is the feature space which has total the 13 column now let's go ahead and get the target as well into a y so we get here the y is equal to the boston dot target and finally let's go ahead do a train and the test split for this data set although if you want a detailed lesson on a housing price prediction you can go ahead and watch my uh, the video on this the logic uh, uh, the linear regression machine learning on boston housing housing so there uh, it's it's around the two hours lecture so i have taken it in very details and i have gone and covered uh, uh, each and every aspects of this linear regression on housing data set with the exploratory data analysis as well now let's go ahead and do the x train and um, x test and then y train and then finally y test is equal to the train test split and there we have x y and of course the test size we need to put let's go ahead and put just 0 0.2 and here we have a random state random state is equal to the zero the one thing you might notice here that i'm not putting the stratify since stratify doesn't work into a regression problem so that's why i'm not putting there stratify now i have got the training and the testing data set let's go ahead and the calculate the mean square error for each of these each of these columns okay so to do that what i can do i can calculate i can create a msc uh, msc list empty list and then the similarly as i have been doing for each individual features in uh, actually this is the procedure into the univariate feature selection techniques we need to do for each individual features so here we have x train dot column so it returns each individual features into a feature let's go ahead and then build a classifier a regressor which is actually okay the linear regression sorry uh, clf and uh, then the clf dot fit and in that i need to pass here the x train and inside that we need to select just a single feature okay and this i also need to convert into the frame as well okay and after that i need to pass here y train and then once it is done then i need to uh, get into the y prediction y pred is equal to the clf dot the predict okay so there i have x test and for the same feature okay the two frame and then y test so here uh, uh, actually for prediction we don't need to put the y test okay so this is for the prediction now let's go ahead and add the msc value into the msc list and in that i need to put here the mean absolute uh, sorry the mean square error there i need to pass here a y test that's the true value and the y pred which is the predicted value so now if you see here this msc in msc i have got the mean square error for each of these features okay so now let's go ahead and take this msc into a pandas series and then it will show the corresponding msc okay against the each features so here we have msc is equal to the pd dot series and there we have msc okay 
and I think I can also put the index as well there so here we have the index index is equal to the x underscore train dot the columns now if you go ahead and uh, 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 but before the plotting this so let's go ahead and sort this msc msc dot sort values into the descending order or ascending order so i'll be plotting this into the ascending uh, order okay so let's go at descending order so here i'm gonna put here the ascending oops here i'm gonna put the ascending is false and then in place is equal to the true and then here let's go ahead and see the msc so the higher the msc means more the error so the lower msc suggests that these features are very important in the prediction so there we have how many features so there are total 13 features so in these out of 13 features if we see these two features are giving almost the less than uh, 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 half of the MSC, okay, than other remaining features. So with this, what we can do? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, right? So these 11 features are giving almost the double, not exactly the double, but, you know, the quite large than these two features. So what we are going to do, we are going to just select these two features, okay, based on this MSC this says that these features are very important otherwise what we can do we can just plot this now you see okay so these features are really very important now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna calculate the uh, the prediction based on these two features and then i'm gonna also calculate the predictions based on all the features and then i'll compare the performance of the model okay Perfect. Now let's go ahead and select the training and the testing data set based on just two features x train underscore 2 is equal to x underscore train. And there I have just rm and l stat. Okay. And then here we have x test underscore 2 is equal to x underscore test there also we should have rm and l stat okay so here we have a training and the testing data set now let's go ahead and uh, and calculate calculate the performance on uh, the selected features and the original feature set so here we have a model and then the linear regression then model dot fit and this will be fit first x train underscore 2 and then of course y train then here what we are going to do we are going to do y pred y pred is equal to the model dot predict there we should have x test underscore 2 that's mean that is the feature 2 now let's go ahead and print the r2 rmsc and standard deviation of the housing price and then here in this i'm gonna call here the r2 score okay so in this we have uh, the r2 score there we have sorry uh, the y test oops sorry mm -hmm, sorry uh, the y test and then here we have y bread okay and the similarly for for the rmsc here we have rmsc now np dot square root then the mean is square error and then we need to pass here y test and then y bread okay and then finally 
what i'm going to do i'm going to print here the standard deviation of a price okay house price standard deviation of house price which we can get by calling npstd of y so let's go ahead and run this so it, with this we found out that by selecting only these two features we are getting r2 score of the 54 and rmsc is around 6 okay and the standard deviation is around 9 so in this way we get that uh, the root mean square error on the predicted values is less than the standard deviation of the house price so we can say that this is not the bad selection this is the good selection and uh, and the prediction time it took just four millisecond now let's go ahead and do these predictions on the original data set which is the x train and here we put here the x test yes right now let's go ahead and do this on the original data set right so on the original data set okay right so on the original data set you see here um, uh, the select on the selected features it is taking just three millisecond but on the original data set if you see here it is taking four millisecond so so somehow there is a, uh, the gain into uh, uh, the processing time and the training time but if you see the score so score is quite high if we select the whole data set which is uh, here around 59 and uh, here it is just a 54 but if you see here the rmsc which is around 5.8 but here it is 6.1 so that's mean the 0.3 rmsc there is the 0.3 the change of the 0.3 so the moreover what we can say here is that uh, uh, the feature selections doesn't always guarantee at least this univariate feature selection doesn't always at least guarantee that uh, 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 guarantee that uh, uh, the better accuracy but the one thing it always guarantee that he, uh, uh, the, the reduction into the training time since we always reduce the feature dimensions so that simplify the complexity of the model and sometimes it depends on your models and the data and the algorithm as well uh, uh, the, how the performance of uh, uh, how the feature selection is performing and the moreover the univariate doesn't perform as well as good as embedded and the wrapper method performs so after the few lessons i'll start the embedded and the wrapper methods as well in which you will see that we will we will get a better accuracy than than the univariate feature selections so this is all about in this lesson and uh, please keep watching and don't forget to subscribe this channel and if you have any doubts comment below okay bye bye have a nice day